So Memo, yeah. uh, I wanted to just have a little discussion with you because I found it really curious some of the comments you've made about how you sort of were able to overcome a lot of the things that happened to you in grade school and high school mm -hmm. and get to an understanding in your brain about who you are and, and how you're gonna move forward, sort of like a self-change agent in your life. Okay. So can you sort of explain how it was for you in high in grade school and high school and how it's it is now and and some of that process that happened to you? Oh, so uh, basically, uh, starting from the beginning is uh, when I was younger, I was very impulsive, very, uh, I have Asperger's and ADHD. So it, uh, for me, it was a challenge to provide myself with a filter with no mentors, no, no one around me with similar traits. So the beginning, when I went to this high school for behavioral high school, uh, it was, everyone's like, I don't wanna go there, I don't need this place, because they're very, they're very don't want help. They just want to figure it on their own. So I'm going through that, that uh, high school where they had kind of like a system of uh, point sheets and uh, breaks and all that, and more accommodations for people with those kind of tendencies where they don't have a filter, they don't, uh, cog they don't think, they don't really have enough cognitive uh, function to be in a regular career, job, or whatever. Um, going through there uh, really helped me at the end. Everyone at the end is like, oh, I'm glad I came because they see them once they change. But uh, after that, I came over to CIP uh, where I got the uh, social aspect down, but now I, I wanted to take care of my executive function, so time management, and uh, going to school and following through with schedule. So uh, coming in, uh, I was really, uh, what really helped me the most was being able to have an individual part in my own life and not having uh, a structure that was provided for me. I was making my own structure. So that's what helped me learn how to function uh, in terms of those kind of executive functionings. And now I'm on the program, uh, I'm going back to school and holding down two jobs. Um, and living on my own, so. So tell me about this, um, when you said you had this, um, had to deal with this, um, filter, what, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? So, um, so, for me, it's very difficult to, uh, think before I say. A lot of people say like, oh, my mind's running a million miles, and for people on the spectrum or with ADHD, it's hard. To, um, to really stop yourself from saying embarrassing things that you might have just thought of. Okay. Uh, so growing up with that kind of support it allowed me to create sort of a filter, if you will, cognitive filter for what's appropriate or what's uh, will actually okay. make sense. And the filter, it seems like what's happened is not, not only a filter anymore, but it's become like a, a, a space that you use in your brain where you can actually make decision to take more proactive action in your life yeah. and not just avoid uh, being inappropriate, but yeah. sort of like, okay, now how am I gonna get what I want, right? Well, the thing is, I use the term filter because I don't have time in my brain to like stop and think. That's okay. after the fact, I learned from my mistakes. So the filter is, okay. I imagine, I'm talking, but as I'm talking, the filter is filtering all the okay. impulsivities. Right, so it's sort of like an emotional regulator. Yeah. It's sort of telling you, okay, don't say too much, or you're yeah. saying the wrong thing, stop. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then the filter is built on previous experiences. And some people would say this is just maturity because you're learning to be an adult and yeah. whatever. But it's really more than that because people on the spectrum can have this their whole life. Yeah, it's right? a developmental. Uh, right disorder in a sense well I mean in the sense that it, it disorders your actions mm -hmm. but you're not disordered yourself but it's sort of like a, a problem area where you have to learn to cope with it mm -hmm. so um, so what comes forward for me when you talk is that I think about how you're so self-directed now so what you did is you took this structure that was sort of provided for you and then you got it that you needed to do this for yourself, right? Yeah. And you started doing the filtering, 
But then now it's taken you a step further where you're now saying, how do I want my life to be? And how do I reach my goals? So now you're available to do college because your mind is yeah. somewhat filtered, right, and controlled, and you're working, you can have goals, right, and follow through with exactly. them. Exactly. Like a lot of, I feel like a lot of times, uh, before I even had a job, I was so concerned on being able to maintain a job and maybe get a job. And now that I have a job, it's, uh, I'm not so worried anymore, actually. I just, I move on. After that, those little baby steps, it's, it's a big growth improvement. I didn't think I'd ever be, like, very cognitive, uh, Cognitive maturity or, or neurotypical right. where they are at, you know. Yeah, um, they can operate in their system. Yeah, I mean, in society. Yeah, well, here's the deal. You've also unlocked this, I mean, this person that was scared and frightened who mm -hmm. couldn't think straight for himself. Now you're like this calm, social person that people will really like. Yeah. And that was all, always there, but it was hidden by... Well, I feel like everybody, I mean, like most people on the spectrum, they want to be like, they want to have social connections, but because the negative connotations or associations or even interactions prevent them from really trying further and then they just lose or they get negative or I feel like if I didn't have good social uh, relations after a while, I would just give up. I would, I'd be, I'd be shut in, I feel like. Right, right, right. So that was the key. And how, how did you learn that? How did I learn that? With uh, my family. First, my fa my mom, because she found out I had a, I, uh, you know, was uh, not neurotypical, that she uh, went to become an educator with right. uh, students. And then from there, I had this kind of slowly building up network of, uh, of people who kind of understood. Uh, and then from there, went from there to high school. So then high school, it was, everyone there had, was a reason that they were there. So there's really no judgment, like in public high school, where right. it could be very could uh, be hard. Bullied, bullied, right? Yeah. So you weren't bullied there. So Not that helped all. you sort of pull your head out of the foxhole? Yeah. And then when you got here, how did it take off for you? Well, here, I was already very sociable in my senior year. I, was, okay. I had a bunch of friends. But here, um... I took the opportunity to, to kind of reach out to other people who never maybe not have had my experience. Um, so, I got from here not just the the time management aspect, the executive functioning, but to be able to reach out and to like initiative. do that myself. Some initiative. initiative and leadership. Yeah. You're showing a lot of leadership now, and so you know here's the deal. Like I said, you went through a really hard start in your life, but that's a source of strength now, because you know what you know. In fact, if you, you're probably gonna be a stronger adult than most of these people who never had that happen, because you know what it's like to suffer and have these problems, but you've been able to also know how to overcome them. And so that's a real source of strength to help others. I'd say that the greatest source of strength would be knowing uh, that there is a way because a lot of people you can go through experiences, but uh, a lot of I feel like a lot of people in my community They they don't know that there's a way there's always a way and so right. it's just you need to ask for help It's so it's a source of strength and hope for you that you know yeah. you can find a way you can Network you can work with other people you if can you, find an answer if you didn't have a like for me like I never no one put me in, a, in a, an interview no one put me, uh, you like the electronics? Well, here, here's an interview or anything. But, uh, like, even growing up, uh, I, my mom was very kind of conservative of her perception of me, what my capabilities are. So, like, when I, uh, when I had a job as a cashier or something, um, she was like, are you sure you can do that? She had a very old perception of me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, knowing what someone's capable of and helping them grow. And even your is mom it, having that is amazing. So people do tend to hold you in your past, right? Yeah, that's what I feel, yeah, it happens a lot. And you're, and now, because you've learned how to be a self-change agent, you, it's on, you, if you want to learn something, you know you can do it. You can go after it, right? I was very interested after, 
after the, when people first get diagnosed, there's some denial. After, after kind of accepting it and trying to grow with it, I started reading neuro, like uh, books about neurology. I started getting interested in, in uh, people who publish books about ADHD or autism. I actually have it, and even people who don't. But it's it's very uh, enlightening. Well, as we know, I mean, that's what I write about, and self-awareness is the first step. You can't go anywhere without self-awareness and self-acceptance. And once you do, it opens up the whole world for you. It gives you the tools to actualize what you want to do. Exactly. And so, uh, there's still, and even people who don't have like a neurological, or not neurologically typical, they still have um, issues trying to follow through the actualization. So it must be even harder for non-neurotypicals. Exactly. It's it's a nightmare sometimes. Yeah, see that's a gift that you understand that and you can be helpful to others because of that. You might even consider working in this field. I am heavily, heavily. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else you want to ask uh, that's significant that you think someone should know in, in your situation right now? Um, I would say I feel like everyone goes through like some sort of depression, I feel like. And I feel like the people in my community are very, very prone to that because we're also prone to uh, different uh, neurological tendencies like addiction. We're more, I feel like we're more prone to addiction okay. and other things. Um, so for me, uh, growing up didn't have the, the, the support first. It was really hard to, to deal with any type of uh, mental uh, de depression, anything like that. So, being able to say to other people, "Hey, like we've been there. I, like most people have been there. Uh, you're not alone." Is something I just not a lot of people put that out there in the, in the specific community of people with learning differences. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for being open to doing this with me, no and wish you the best. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Okay.